Hey folks, Autodesk asked me if I wanted to make a video showcasing the value of combining 2D and 3D in the sketching process. So I thought the best way to showcase this would be for me to do a robot design, sketching and ideating in sketchbook and using Fusion 360 to check some of the mechanisms and also to help me with the perspective shots. So when it comes to designing your own personal robot, it is always a good idea to start out with doing a whole bunch of thumbnails. This is where you can really go crazy and just try out all the silly ideas that are in your head. Uh, this is something very common in the early stages of, of almost every design process actually, and that is because it has several benefits. It helps in freeing up your mind from ideas you might not like, but they keep on circling back. Uh, once you put an idea on paper, or in this case on the screen, you will liberate your mind and you'll be free to move on to other ideas. But it is also an ideation inception, sort of. So if you see the idea on paper, whether in text or visual form, it can inspire you to your next idea, or you can simply just build on the same idea. And this works even faster in a digital medium where you can copy paste elements quickly and iterate on them. You saw me switch from line sketches to shape sketches, and I do this to look at things a little bit from outside of the box. Silhouettes are very important when it comes to shape design. It gives you that recognizability factor from far. You want to make sure that your design reads quickly and has an interesting shape. And for that, it is important that you don't get bogged down with line details this early in the process. So here, I just took a marker tool and because I didn't want to go full black, I decided to do the shapes with a C2 copy color. While I won't be doing any coloring in this video, I want to mention how much I appreciate the copy colors in Sketchbook. They are a perfect color palette, always ready for you to choose from. And as an industrial designer, I am the happiest when I can start blocking in shapes with the same tools I would be doing traditionally on paper. So if you ever have issues finding the right colors, I really suggest you take a look at the copy colors. Once I had the silhouette I liked, it was time to do some detailing. At this point, I still don't know what exactly my robot will look like, I just know what it will read like from far. I lower the opacity of the silhouette layer and start exploring different detailing options. It is also important for me that the silhouette has no detail in this case, because then I am not let down on a pre-existing road. After I'm done with detailing the silhouette, I decide to keep the legs, because those are good, but I wanted to explore some other shapes as well. I'm quite confident in what I want from my robot, so I'm fine with erasing the upper body at this point and coming up with different new shapes for it. Now, before I go further, I have to plug the Hudson Rui and Kevin Mellon brushes again. These are my main tools when I draw in Sketchbook. Throughout the whole early sketching process, I use Kevin's sketching brush to explore the ideas, and later, when it comes to finalizing my lines and doing the fine detail work, I will be using Hudson Rio's pencil brush. But that is just me. There are dozens of really fun brushes you can find on a Sketchbook blog and I recommend you explore them and maybe find your new favorite brushes as well. Coming back to the sketching process, I did two iterations based on the gray silhouette and I wanted to do something completely opposite to it, so I went with the ball shape for the upper body. I find that going in the opposite direction can be a good exercise when you are ideating because it can reinforce your previous design direction as the correct one or give you a new exciting path to explore. I actually liked the rounder upper body quite a bit and found it hard to decide which one to continue with. I thought it might be interesting to share these with my Instagram community and ask them which one they would go for. And after the voting was done, I decided to combine the two most upvoted versions into one final design that I was quite satisfied with, since it had elements from both designs that I liked, the boxy elongated body shape from one and the central paw in the torso from the other one. This part of the sketching is where the thinking work gets done. Here I have to think more about the functionalities of my robot and how things are put together. A lot of the main detailing happens here. Pistons, surface changes, optical sensors, all these sort of little things have to be clear once I'm done with this part of the process. Obviously this is not the final detailing level, but 
if you want to have nice, crispy, clean lines, it is important that your sketches or that your pre-sketch is as final as possible. And let me tell you, this is not even the final pre-sketch. So yeah, there is no way around it. The cleaner you want your lines to be, the more times you have to draw the same thing. But okay, to talk a little bit about my final design, I basically took the ball and made it the central part of the upper torso, having that elongated body shape form around it, almost like it's central to its rotation. And uh, so basically it can rotate around that ball. But also I wanted to make sure that the ball can rotate on that hip area and its rotation is limited by the pistons on the front and the back of the hips. Once I was done with detailing the sketch to a satisfactory level, it was time for me to jump into Fusion. And since this is not a Fusion 360 tutorial, I'm not going to show you every part of the modeling process since I didn't find that necessary. Furthermore, I am not using Fusion to create a final detailed 3D model that I can use to render some nice images. No. I have two main goals for using Fusion, one being getting some clarity on the legs and the other one is to help me get different angles on the same robot easily. Now as you could see from the very start I didn't put too much effort into the legs and reuse the same sketch over and over again. Uh, that was on purpose because I knew that I wanted to show off how a quick model of the legs can come in handy even when you want to do a 2D illustration. As you can see, I'm keeping things quite blocky and undefined and that is because in my head I'm thinking a little bit of the grey silhouette as well. I'm not thinking of all the details that are in the leg. After all, this is going to be a 2D illustration. No one is going to be able to zoom in on the leg and see all the hinges and joints and connections. That is not our goal here. But it is still possible to give a feeling of functionality even though we only use basic shapes. This step is really up to you how much time you want to put into or into it or how much time you have on your hand. Either way, I would suggest you give yourself a limit. Have a maximum amount of time that you will put into this part because as I said, unless you want to use a 3D model for rendering purposes, there is no reason going into crazy detail. Having said that, I did do some extra steps like adding some chamfers here or there and creating some more complex combined shapes. This was mostly for the first part of the joint that connects to the hip part of the body. I really enjoyed the process of the detailing and I also liked how it looked, but I also realized that if I want to be done in time, I will have to cut down on the detailing and that is exactly what I did. You can see in the rest of uh, the appendages that they are quite basic shapes with very sharp edges even. Definitely not something that you find when you're looking for hard surface modeling, but once again, this is not modeling for modeling sake. Somewhere around the, the time I finished modeling the first joint, I remember that I'm more of a sketching person and I always have some sketches on paper before I try modeling something. So I stepped back and did some more in detail sketches of uh, what I imagined this leg to look like. This is important for you to know about yourself as well. Do you like modeling off of nothing or do you need more guidance? I have friends who don't even sketch in the beginning. They jump directly into 3D and do their sketchy models there. So yeah, you can do your, let's say, so-called thumbnails in 3D if you like 3D that much and are super fast with it. I remember that I, on the other hand, am someone who likes to have a drawing or a blueprint to work off of. I'm not going to show you that sketching process since it adds no value here, but your takeaway should be that there is no wrong approach. You have to do what works best for you. Something that is very useful for me here is modeling the pistons that help in articulating the limbs. Drawing cylinders in perspective can be a bit tricky, especially when they are a subpart of a bigger assembly and you don't have them in prime view. Just like with the rest of the limbs, I keep the pistons to a minimum when it comes to detail. Two rods that can slide into each other and are connected to the legs with hinges. And while I thought that the pistons might be the only thing to cause a problem, as soon as I started modeling them, I realized that I have to think of how to mount them. Where do the hinges go on the legs and where do I cut out material from the legs for the motion not to result in intersecting geometry? So modeling things like these in 3D definitely helps in understanding the functionality of moving objects a lot more. 
Once I was done with the pistons, the most fun part of the whole 3D endeavor could begin, namely the assembly. I always enjoyed this part of 3D modeling the most. Once you have all your components done and you can finally start putting them together so they look like an actual functional product. Fusion has all the necessary joints for you to assemble your model and they are quite easy to navigate. I mostly use the revolute and slide joints for the whole leg. After I was done with the assembly, I adjusted the angle of the joints so I got a more natural position for the leg. I did the same thing for the other leg and then mirrored the two legs onto the other side as well. This is the biggest advantage working in 3D after you're done with the modeling part. It really speeds up the process. From here I just had to choose some fun camera angles and take screenshots. And this is when I realized that the upper body of my robot was a bit small. But the positive thing in parametric modeling is that I just had to jump back to my early sketches of the body and adjust some of the dimensions to get the correct proportions for the upper body. This is my favorite part of parametric modeling and using Fusion as well. If you do a good job and constrain all your sketches from the beginning, it's super easy to adjust your model even after you are done. Now that I took screenshots of all the angles I needed, it is time to jump back into Sketchbook and start drawing the final sketch. And yes, I mean sketch because now I want a higher resolution sketch on top of which I can draw my final lines. See, as I said, it takes a lot of effort to get those crispy lines, at least the way I do it, it does. For the higher resolution sketch, I enlarged the screenshot that I chose for the main view and started sketching over it just like I did with the gray silhouette drawing. I have the detail information in my head from the previous sketches and I also have some detail information in the 3D legs. I tend to keep a picture of my previous sketch open on another monitor for help as well. So now I'm basically layering all the detail I already sketched onto the 3D frame plus adding new stuff as I find necessary. I try to end up with a relatively clean sketch in this phase to make my life easier when I go over it for the final time. When I feel that I'm done, I turn up the layer with the 3D model and start working on the final lines. As I said, I switch to the non-sketchy pencil and make sure to draw with deliberate strokes, paying attention to line weight. I think line weight is one of the most important factors when you want to have a really nice line art. Knowing the difference of using thin lines only for details and using thick lines for outlines, shadow directions and intersections is really important. One thing that can happen very easily, and it actually happens a lot with me, is that the final lines end up a bit rigid and stiff, especially compared to the previous sketches that have a lot of dynamism in them. That is why I make sure to leave some detailing work for this final part. That is my solution of trying to keep my finished lines dynamic as well, basically drawing something just from my head, not following pre-established lines. And once again, the strength of modeling something in 3D shows itself. If I would have to draw the same robot from different angles, it would take me much longer and I would have to wreck my brain around things like change of perspective, for shortening and missing details. Not in this case, because I have the screenshots of the robot in different angles. All I have to do is just dress up those 3D models with the information I already have. I don't even have to draw all the details because I made sure to detail out the main view. I don't have to put the same effort into top and back views. It's a neat little trick where we let the brain fill in all the small detail work. This also happens because these complementary views are smaller in size. On one side, I didn't want to take away the importance of the main view, but on the other, I also make my life easier if I keep the size down because you don't need to detail smaller elements of a visual. Uh, take a look at comic book pages. All the smaller characters and elements in the background have almost no detail. So I'm very comfortably drawing over the top and back views and only sketching out the important parts. I hope this gave you a taste of how you can speed up your drawing process by using 3D and you will start implementing more Fusion 360 into your sketchbook process. If you liked my robot and want to see more of my stuff, feel free to check out my Instagram or YouTube where I upload on a regular basis. Till the next video, take care and have a great time. Bye bye.